All right. Um, so I guess we're going to get started now. Um, I'm Maureen, and this is Nicole. And we're two of the librarians at the virtual library. Um, so presumably you're here so that you can learn about what's going on. This is what we're going to be covering in the session today. We're going to be looking at uh, what the virtual library is and who the virtual library team is, um, how to get access to the resources in the virtual library, um, to describe the resources that we have and to describe the services that we offer. Um, if you have any questions, we're monitoring chat throughout. Uh, so feel free to ask throughout. If it's a long question, we might wait till the end to answer it. And we will be having questions at the end as well. Um, so what is the virtual library? Well, after a great deal of back and forth discussion between the University of Manitoba and the, virtual, and the WRHA, the decision was made to close the hospital libraries, many of which you probably knew and loved, um, and to replace it with the centralized WRHA virtual library in order to facilitate online access and to make it a single point and to make sure that all hospitals were getting the same sort of access. Um, so we provide uh, access to electronic resources for WRHA staff uh, to, and to eligible members of community health agencies and personal care homes, as well as WRHA contracted physicians. And the WRHA virtual library is fairly new, so feel free to give us feedback in order to improve it. We'd like to be as good as possible to help you guys out. Um, so. How do you get access? Um, there are a couple of ways uh, to get access. Most community health agencies and personal care homes are a little bit different. Uh, we don't give access to every single personal care home in the city. So we've got a list on our get access page, great big long list of all these resources. Um, and if you're PCH or CHA is on that list. Uh, you can send us uh, information through the login form, which I'll show you on the next slide. If you need access and you don't have it and your personal care home isn't listed on there, you can email Kevin or Hannah those email addresses at the bottom there to, to ask about it. Um, so where's this form on the Get Access page, which is on the URL at the bottom there, libguides.lib.umanitoba.ca slash WRHA slash access. Um, in the bottom right-hand corner, right there, uh, this is where you would put in your information. So if you're from a personal care home or a community health agency, you put in your name, your email address, and then we need a photo of your staff ID. And we know that we already know that some uh, personal care homes don't have staff IDs, in which case please email us directly and, and we'll let you know the process from there. Um, and there's a select your organization, so all the valid organizations will be on there. Um, and now I'm going to transfer it over to Nicole to talk about resources. All right. Hi guys. Uh, so the WHA Virtual Library has uh, lots of electronic resources that you guys can access for, from your home, your unit, your office, wherever you happen to be. And we're going to walk through some of those and how you get access to them. So from our homepage, the URL is at the bottom of your screen there, uh, we have this great big search box right in the middle of the page. This is a quick way to search across several of our collections at once. It's not as precise as using some of our databases, but it still gives you a quick way to search for uh, a resource or a book or something that you might want to take a look at real quickly. So if you enter your search term on that page, you get to a page that looks kind of like this, and there'll be a big yellow box telling you that you need to sign in, because if you don't sign in, you won't have access to all of the links you need to access the resources. So once you sign in, you should see your name in the top right-hand corner of the screen, and then you'll be back at your results page. So I did a search for a geriatric assessment, and I got 37,000 results, which is great. <laughs> Uh, on the left side of your screen, you'll see some options for you to narrow that down a little bit. For example, you can look at only articles or only books. You can narrow it down by publication date, and there's a bunch of different options for you to help figure out what is most relevant to your needs. 
once you find a resource that you really like, you just want to click on the title and it'll take you to a screen that looks kind of like this. And you'll see a whole bunch of different links for how you can view this item. However, you only get access to the ones that say WRHA and not the ones that don't say WRHA. So if you see a WRHA link, great, you can click on it and get immediate full text access from wherever you are. If you don't happen to see a WRHA link, don't panic. You can just scroll down to the availability and request section and click on the order sources button. And that will basically request that we get that item for you and then we can either email it to you if it's electronic or send a physical copy to you free of charge at your unit or office. Going back to the homepage, I mentioned that uh, the general search is not very precise, but you have lots of other options for finding information and getting through to our resources. If you go to the big find information button right there in the center of the page, you'll come to a page that looks like this. And this has some different options for you to get access to different resources. The main one that we'd recommend for you guys is the online resources button, because this gives you access to all of our different library databases. So on this page, you'll see a whole list of all the different databases that we have. Uh, some of the main ones are PubMed, which is a great general broad biomedical database. We've also got CINAHL, which focuses more on nursing allied health. We've got PEN for nutritionists. We've got PsychInfo for psychologists. We have UpToDate as a general uh, point of care clinical tool. So I definitely recommend that you guys take a look through this list, see what see pops out as being most relevant to your area of practice, your area of interest. And of course, if you run into any problems using any of these databases, we're always happy to help. You can give us a call or book appointment and we can walk through with you how to use any of these databases. No Scopus, unfortunately, is not available through the WHA Virtual Library, but I'd really recommend that you look at what is available, available, and if there's something that you think is missing, definitely we can take a look at recommending it for purchase. Uh, back on this Find Information page, you've also got this big Toolkits button. Now, a toolkit is basically an online guide for recommended resources for a particular professional area or a topic. So if we take a look at the medicine guide, for example, on the left hand side, you've got a list of general resources that will be broadly applicable to doctors. So you've got Access Medicine, PubMed, Up to Date, Diagnosisaurus, all those kind of things. And then on the center and right columns, you have a list of specific resources for particular specialty areas. For example, you see a list of three general journals for anesthesiology. Keep in mind, those are not the only three journals on anesthesiology we happen to have. These are just our recommended selection of key resources for you to take a look at when you're starting your research in this particular topic area. And again, if you would like us to recommend a resource, particularly if your specialty area isn't covered by one of our toolkits, let us know. We're certainly happy to help set that up for you. We can also set up some special alerts that Maureen will be talking about a little bit later. Yeah. Um, so with the toolkits, if you think that we need if you'd like to see more resources on something in your area, um, let us know and we can work with you to make the toolkit better. Uh, we can also, if you're not seeing a toolkit that is your area and you really think it would be beneficial, let us know um, and we'll set one up. We are currently working on a few more um, and there are some that are listed in the special topics toolkit. Um, that aren't necessarily their own toolkit yet. They might be at some point in the future, like Indigenous Health, um, for example. Uh, and gerontology is in there still. Long-term care. Long-term care. Uh, so, all right. But let's talk about the services. I've noticed that we're going through this quite a bit faster than I intended to. So I think after we're done the session, like after we're done the slides, we're going to go to the uh, virtual library site and actually walk through some of these things so you can see them live instead of just my screenshots. Um, so in terms of what services we offer, uh, the big three are document delivery, literature searches, and education and training. Um, we also do current awareness alerts, which I hadn't planned to talk about, but we will, <laughs> and I'll get to them at the end. So, uh, in terms of document delivery, now if you've used our virtual library, you may have noticed that not everything is available to you. Nicole touched on this already. Um, but just because you can't access it immediately doesn't mean you won't have it. 
So if you contact us through the order sources request form or through the, the main search uh, with resources, I'll go through the steps in just a second. Uh, we can order books, articles, or other resources for you, and you'll still get them. Uh, the main downside is that it'll take a little longer, um, maybe a couple of days, or if it's a physical book coming from another library, say from BC, it might take a couple of weeks. And we just ask that you build us into your workflow. Um, because you can still get the information. I need to stress this. You can still get the information. Um, Nicole, you looked like you were going to say something. Yeah, I just want to mention, usually if it's a U of M uh, electronic article, we can even get it within a couple hours yeah. within our workday. Yeah, it depends on basically what the workload here at the office is like, um, which is why I hedged to say a couple of days. Yeah. But it, it's often quite a bit faster than that. Um, and it's during the work hours, so like if you're requesting it at seven o'clock at night, you're not going to get it until the next day at the earliest because we're only in the office from eight till four. Um, so there are two ways to order sources. Uh, one is the way that Nicole sort of talked about before. So once you're signed in, and you do need to be signed in to do this, you're seeing this this thing in that big long list of searching that you've done from the main search page and you'll okay here's the source you want this book on thyroid or article article on thyroid um, and there's there's no full text but you'll see no full text click here to request and if you click that it'll take you to the search form but the search form will be auto populated with the information that you need um, so you don't need to type in all the information um, you can also, if you've already clicked into it, you can scroll down and you'll see this get it here. Um, and then underneath there's the order sources button down there. Uh, so that's, it's the same thing. It's just different points in the process and I wanted you to see it both ways. Um, this is what the document delivery search for or request form looks like. Um, so in this case, it's it's auto populated so this is the information that comes up um, if you click on it from the order sources page which you can get to by going to the main page services order sources and then the user request form you can fill it out yourself so if you're not seeing the resource you need when you're looking for the source or you have a specific one in mind and you don't want to look it up, you can just fill out this information yourself. Now, there are things in here that, you know, it would be nice if they were in there, but we don't actually need them to find the resource. Mostly we need title, author, journal, year. Those are the, the key things. Um, and if you have less than that, we'll try to find it but we'd really like it if you had more than that. <laughs> um, and then down at the bottom of the page, you'll see your contact information as well. So that's how we will get the article to you. Yes, yeah. And uh, there's a little tick box that you have to check. Please acknowledge our institution's conditions uh, before placing a request. And the conditions are those things in bright red right there. <laughs> um, and then once you tick that, you can submit it. And the request will go through and if you haven't heard anything in what you consider to be a reasonable length of time feel free to let us know it's not common but could get lost I suppose hopefully not um, we also do literature searches um, and we will do these on any topic you want at all um, even if it's something that involves a lot of non health related resources like if you need to do a search for management or something we will happily do those searches as well um, what we'll do is we will pro provide you with a list of articles books guidelines whatever it is you're looking for that has abstracts relevant to you and we'll provide you with instructions on how to find these information on how to find these resources within the WRHA virtual library or how to order them through the mechanisms I just talked about uh, using document delivery. Um, and so you can request a literature search in one of two ways. You can go to the literature search request form 
Uh, so that's the WRHA homepage, services, literature search, and then the order of literature search request, or by emailing us directly. Um, now, I think Nicole prefers, prefers the form, and I tend to prefer being emailed directly, but it doesn't matter. We will all get it anyways. Um, and if we have any questions, uh, we'll contact you and we'll say we want to talk about it a little bit more. Um, now, there are certain things that you should be thinking about, and the, the literature search form prompts you for these, such as what types of sources, when do you need it by, um, how, many, how many sources do you want, what years, like are you wanting just like the last two years, or are you wanting some sort of historic review all the way back to 1850. Um, any of those are fine. Uh, you should try and narrow your question down. PICO is one way to do this, so that's looking at the population, the intervention, the comparator, and the outcome. Um, but that works better for some types of questions than others. Uh, it tends to work better for like, well, what medicine is better for this? Is this medicine better than that medicine? And less so for like, well, I need to look at the management style for my hospital uh, sort of questions. Um, and if you're not Feel free to contact us anyway, even if you're not sure how, even if you feel your search isn't narrow enough. We can certainly talk it out. If you're just at the beginning phases of doing a project, you can say, look, I just need some basic introductory information to X, Y, Z topic, and we'll find that for you as well. Uh, we're also happy to talk with you about it. Um, now, because we've been blowing through this webinar relatively quickly, I'm going to mention that we will do systematic reviews as well. Uh, we'll work with you on those that you don't want to use the literature search form for, and we actually need to like have real multiple back and forth conversations with you. And uh, if you're interested in the systematic reviews, feel free to send us an email or phone us or uh, set up an appointment with us in our calendars, which you can do from the website, which maybe we'll, we'll talk about in a bit. Um, we also offer training and orientation sessions. So of course we have these, these ones that we're offering now on a monthly basis. Uh, in October, we'll, we will be covering searching PubMed, and then in November, effective Googling, and then in December, we will be looking at evidence-based practice and levels of evidence. Um, and then we have, we'll have more in starting in January again and through on into the summer. Um, we also will do orientation set orientation sessions, so like welcome to the WRHA virtual library, or education sessions on any topic that well that we know about <laughs> um, upon request. Um, we'd like to have a little bit of lead time, but if it is something like I need I need you to come down and you're nearby our offices at NJM, uh, we can come down with fairly limited notice and present on for instance, PubMed, which we know pretty well. Um, but some of the other ones require more preparation. So if you're interested in an orientation session, that you would be interested on this, um, be for any side be for uh, your group of 200 people, um, who are new to your office or but in theory um, yes and then we also the audio seems to be cutting out uh, is anybody else finding that the audio is cutting out or is it just could you guys let us know okay can you guys hear us Maybe I'll ask in the chat. Hmm. Okay. Okay, we're back. Okay. Well, we're just, I'm not sure what we can do about that, unfortunately. So we're just going to keep talking and hope it's all good. Whoops. Um, but continuing on with the education sessions. Uh, we will also be hosting, well, we currently have a couple of educational videos up on the website. Um, they don't work on all computers. For example, they don't work on mine uh, because they're not HTML5 compliant. Um, and so we'll, we'll be having more soon. Uh, there will be one coming out 
at the end of the month and then at different dates thereafter, those will be about 10 minutes and they'll be on individual topics such as how do you search the virtual library? How do you order a source? Just sort of step-by-step -step guides. Um, if there's anything you'd really like to see done, uh, send us a shout out and uh, we'll try and get one of those videos up and ready to go. Um, and in terms of the current awareness, we can set up alerts so that, for instance, in PubMed, uh, you can you can have this topic is relevant to you. Now we won't we don't manage those, so we'll walk you through the process of setting it up yourself. But we are happy to build you a complicated search that you can then put into your own PubMed to bring out the best results. Um, all right, let's so. If there are any questions, uh, we're going to be sticking around here. We're about 10 minutes earlier than I thought for being finished. Um, so feel free to ask in the chat any questions. We're just going to jump to the website live uh, so that you can actually see some of these things in, uh, in, in practice. Okay. Uh, Nicole, do you want to take through some of the... Sure. So this is the Deborah Shea Virtual Library website. I already mentioned the big search bar right in the middle here. And we kind of already went through the find information page. But another thing to mention there is the up-to-date access. If you haven't looked at that previously, that might be something you might want to take a look at because it really is helpful for um, getting an app for your phone that can provide point-of-care tools at the bedside. Here is the services section that Maureen mentioned. Uh, that's where you would find your literature search request form, the order sources area, library training. Our contact page over here, uh, this is where you would go to find contact information for all of our librarians, as well as we have this nice big blue book and appointment button. So this will actually show you where on our calendar's time is available if you want to meet one on one with us to talk through maybe you need help with the database, maybe you want help with the search, anything like that, we're happy to meet with you at any time. Yeah. Uh, going back to the services page, Maureen had briefly mentioned the current awareness service. I also wanted to mention uh, we have the current perspectives of bibliographies. So these are uh, bibliographies of covering recent literature on topics of particular interest, like we have one on brain injury rehab, we have end of life care, medical marijuana, sort of topics that are of interest to a lot of people that maybe might be helpful for you if you're looking for a broad overview of a topic area. And again, as always, if there's something you think should be added to this list, feel free to let us know. We're going to be updating and adding more of these on a regular basis. Yeah, and we will be updating each one annually. So don't be afraid that, you know, the brain injury one, well, oh, this was done, I mean, obviously, the WRHA virtual library is brand new right now, but don't worry next year if you're like, well, how old is this one? Or in four years, um, they will be current within a year. <laughs> All right, uh, going back to the homepage, we also have our lovely help section. So this is where you would go to learn more about changing your password. I know the automatic passwords that were sent out in January, they're kind of long and complicated. Password slash asterisk capital C, Z, Y, you know. Yeah, so <laughs> if you happen to not be able to remember that, feel free to go in here and look at the instructions to change your password to whatever heck you like. We also have here our video tutorials, which Marie mentioned. Uh, they don't show up well on this computer, but there is also transcripts, so you can actually follow along step by step, even if you can't see the video itself. It'll actually talk you through the steps to do whatever the ha particular task happens to be. Yeah. Finally, here we've got our search help section. So this talks you through some basic ideas like how to build a good search question, how to develop a search strategy using Boolean operators, which are basically like AND and OR that help you to combine your search in a certain way, thinking about synonyms, thinking about alternate terms, that kind of thing. We also have a bunch of hints for revising your search using phrases, truncation, fields, limits, and other things that you might not be familiar with now, but that you can read about more here. And finally, we have some database-specific guides. But again, if you need more help with a particular database, feel free to ask us. And uh, I'll just note we also have um, at, at the top of a page here, we have our blog. 
um, which is a great way to stay up to date on what we're doing. Um, whenever we get a new database, we'll be announcing it here. Whenever we're announcing the new fall education sessions or winter education sessions, we'll post it there. Um, so if you want to know what's going on with us, you can check that. Uh, you can also check our Twitter feed, which is, yeah, in the contact page. Um, and I just forget what our username is, W-R-H-A-V-L. Okay. Thought it was more complicated than that. Um, so, yeah, we'll stick around for a little bit, give you time to ask questions if you have them. Um, I hope this was helpful. <laughs> Anyone have any questions? Feel free to ask them in the chat. Yes. And if it's a longer question and you don't want to ask it in front of a group of people, uh, Oh, you're welcome. Thank you for saying thank you. Um, yeah, and feel free to email us with anything uh, later. We're hopefully fairly, fairly approachable. <laughs> Just so you know, our offices are on the second floor of NJM technically the third floor of Brody. If you ever feel like dropping in, you're welcome to do that as well. Yeah, so that's the Neil John McLean Library ah, yes. uh, right Sorry. beside HSE. I just assume everybody knows what that means. Um, yeah, it's in the Brody Center at the, the Health Sciences Complex. the get access page is talking about form you can fill out. I guess I should still continue to talk at a reasonable volume even though I'm sort of like muttering away here at the end. All right, well, it doesn't look like anybody has any questions. So thank you for joining us today. And uh, this webinar, we will be sending out the slides. Um, we'll be posting the webinar itself uh, tomorrow, I believe at this point. And uh, we will be sending along an assessment survey. So if you're wanting to share anything that you forgot about here, you can share it in the assessment survey, um, which is anonymous, by the way. So, yeah, uh, we're going to sign off. Good to meet you all, sort of. All right, how do I end the webinar now? Yes. <laughs> nope, that's just stop showing screen. How do I? Well, we'll just do this. End webinar. Goodbye. Yes.